Hi everybody. Well, it is a recently Pentecost, and I've been thinking about that in light of all that's been transpiring over the recent history. Um, even as I'm recording outside, there is wind moving around in the backyard. It just reminds me of how much the Holy Spirit is in and among us and moving. And I was thinking about um, Pentecost, and we usually take it as a celebration of like a one-day event. It's almost like it's Christmas, where it is something that we do on a Sunday. Maybe you wear red, and then we move on. And I think where we are in the life of our church, in the life of our city, in the life of our country, um, I don't think we can do that. I think we have to become much more dependent on the Holy Spirit and what his work is in our midst. And so I uh, came across this uh, passage today from Isaiah 57 that I think speaks to where we are and what we need to be doing. It's Isaiah 57:15. It says, the one who is high and lifted up, who lives forever, whose name is holy, says, I live on high in holiness, also with the crushed and lowly, reviving the spirit of the lowly, reviving the heart of those who have been crushed. I think that sentiment can apply across the board to just about everyone. Whether it is the death of George Floyd, whether it is the outpouring of, uh, of anger and um, calls for justice, or whether it is simply trying to figure out how to put our lives back together in the midst of a pandemic. We all have this feeling that there is a need for some revival. And it is the Holy Spirit that can do that. I firmly believe that if anything is going to change in how we go about our lives, how we seek to overcome the injustices of our world, whether we how begin to put our businesses and lives back together, it is really something that requires us to rely upon the Holy Spirit, to lean into the Holy Spirit, to allow the Holy Spirit to direct our ways and to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, to, to humble ourselves before Him. One of the great thoughts I had was this idea that, well, that might be an understatement, a great thought I had, I, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, the idea being that when Jesus was born, one of the names that was given to Him was Emmanuel. That was the name that God is with us. That's really a fulfillment of the angel's prophecy. The Holy Spirit coming and being with us. And so Pentecost is not just about the outpouring of the Spirit on the church. But it is this understanding that God is with us. The third person of the Trinity, the, the, the risen Spirit of Christ lives within us. And so it is not us who do the work that is before us. It is God directing our heart, our mind, and our spirits. And so on this day, as we move into this season of Pentecost, not just a day, that it becomes something that we become more dependent upon the Holy Spirit. I invite you to do that today. And however God might be moving or stirring your heart, if it is of God, if it is scriptural, then I would ask that you would act on it. Act on it and allow the Holy Spirit to move in you and through you as a result of that. That is what I pray this day for all of us as we seek to move into a very different world than it was just a few months ago. So God bless you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he might lift you up. Let me pray for us. Jesus, thank you for giving us your very spirit. And Lord, we confess that all too often we don't let your spirit have full reign over our lives. Lord, I pray that in this season of Pentecost that we would seek to change that. 
that we would strive to allow you to have full control over our lives. Lord, let that happen this day, even in a small way or perhaps even in a big way. Lord, we ask that your spirit would be moving not only in us, but in our world and in our culture to bring an end to the unrest, to weed out those who are seeking destruction just simply to create chaos and allow us to begin to bring the healing that only you can bring, Jesus. To bring the peace and the justice and the reconciliation that is offered by what you did on the cross. Let us be that today in your name. Amen. We continue to move into our Bible study. We have another meeting this Wednesday night. Also, uh, want to let you know that uh, that we have uh, a week from tomorrow, we're going to have another town hall meeting. And so we'll have that, and that information will be coming out this week, as well as our uh, virtual town hall meeting after the service, after worship on the 14th. So just some of the things that are kind of on the docket for us that I want you to be aware of and kind of know what's upcoming. So I hope you have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye now.